Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to show you my round four game from the Versailles Open. And this, this was a very interesting game because of three reasons. Firstly, my opponent played a very suboptimal line uh, in what was an attempt to reach a Catalan type of position and allowed my bishop to get outside of the pawn chain. So allowing me to play something, uh, sort of an improved version of the closed Catalan because my bishop wasn't stuck on c8. Secondly, there was a tactical point very early on uh, in which, well, I'm going to uh, tell you to pause the video and calculate. It's going to be extremely interesting. And thirdly, it was for me one of the most instructive uh, late middle games and end games I've, I've ever played. Okay, so my opponent started pawn d4, d5, c4, c6, standard so far, knight of 3, knight of 6, and in this position he played pawn to g3. And in this particular move order, uh, going for a sort of Catalan setup, I still have not played uh, the move e6. So what white should do instead of g3 is play knight c3, on move four, which forces e6 if black wishes to play the semislav, which I do, and then play g3, and then my bishop cannot get outside of the pawn chain. So now I can get a greatly improved version of what I would like to play with bishop f5, and I have no strategic issues. My bishop isn't stuck. I'm not going to have to play b6 or e5 or c5. Okay, so bishop g2, e6 now. And you can see that there's a huge difference. To, to a normal position, like if he had started with knight c3, then e6, g3, knight bd7, bishop g2, look at this bishop. And this is standard, this is the close Catalan, this is perfectly fine for black, but there are issues to solve. After e6 in our position, I have no issues. Okay, he castled, I played bishop e7. Uh, in Fianchetto structures, the bishop is usually more useful on this diagonal. b3 is slightly uncommon, but I have seen it before. Uh, knight bd7, bishop b2, and now I decided to go h6 just to safeguard my bishop. The, the engine plays h5 followed by a5, which I understand a5 and that's a move I would like to play, but h5 seems unnecessary. The evaluation difference is pretty small though. Uh, knight bd2 castles, rook e1. Okay, and in this position I started calculating. So e4 still isn't possible, but if knight h4 is played, then maybe uh, after knight e4 he could just exchange everything and I could take on h4. And that could be a good position, but I didn't want to risk him being able to play e4 or doubling my e pawns. So I played knight e4 and my calculation was as follows. Uh, he has to take on e4. So I was looking at knight e4 bishop e4, knight d2, bishop g2, king g2, and then I would have played f5. So for example, king g2 followed by f5, and I have a good stonewall structure without the light squared bishop. I have good influence over e5, I can play bishop f6, I can play knight f6, knight e4, I can undermine the structure with a5, a4. This seemed nice, uh, and it, it's not an advantage for black, but I feel like it should be a very pleasant position. And in my mind, that was the only move for for white, the only sensible move. It's probably possible to play e3. If something random is played like a3, then a5, and okay, my knight's on e4, it's nice. The only move I knew should not be played is knight e5. Okay. Now, after knight e5, please pause the video and figure out what you would do. I had decided beforehand, before playing knight e4, I knew what I was going to do if he makes a mistake of playing knight e5. There are two interesting choices, and I'd spent maybe 15 minutes on this move. Okay, pause the video. So, uh, black wins a pawn here, uh, or gets tremendous initiative if white finds a way to save the pawn. There are two moves here. Uh, knight takes e5 or knight takes d2. The engine choice is knight d2 with a big advantage for black, like minus 1.2. And what I played, knight e5, is minus 0.8. So they're both fine, but knight d2 is better. Here's why. 
And I looked at knight takes d2. So knight d2, uh, the most logical move is queen takes d2, but queen takes d2 isn't good. So queen d2, I take on e5, d takes e5 is forced, and now d takes c4. And if the queens are exchanged, my rook's gonna reach the second rank, and my bishops are tremendous. And if the queens aren't exchanged, then, then I just win a pawn. For example, uh, the engine says queen c3 should be okay, I just take on b3, and it's obvious that this battery means nothing with the pawn on e5. Alternatively, if on dc4 they take on d8, then I just recapture, and once they take the pawn back, I play rook d2, and this should be even stronger than simply winning a pawn, uh, because I'm, I'm infiltrating on the second rank, and I, I don't really know where the bishop should go. For example, bishop c1, rook c2, bishop e3, I can just go rook d8. I mean, who cares about the pawn? I can also pick up the a pawn if, if a7 is taken, or simply go bishop b4 and take on, on e2. So this would have been huge. And the knight d2, what worried me, the reason I didn't play this, is knight takes d7. And here was my calculation. So on knight takes d7, uh, I, I cannot take the knight, of course. Uh, that would just be equal. I mean, I could, but it would be equal. So I take on c4. Uh, sorry, I take on c4. And the idea is to take on b2 and then attack the queen. Uh, if I take on c4 and they take back, I did just win a pawn. So knight takes f8, the only move. Knight takes b2. If the queen moves away, for example, queen d2, then I simply play queen f8. And on queen b2, I think I, I have more than enough for the exchange. Obviously, I did win a pawn, but my bishops are absolutely huge. And also, this just wins... Uh, the exchange back so I can just go bishop b4 and, and take on e1. So that's what I was thinking. So knight takes b2, uh, moving the queen isn't possible. White has to counterattack with knight e6. Okay, and on knight e6, I came this far f6 and I couldn't assess this position well. So I saw that queen d2 is possible, but I didn't see bishop a3. I just couldn't figure out a way to save my knight. I was too blind to spot bishop a3. Had I seen bishop a3, this is of course two pieces for a rook and tremendous for me. I have knight and bishop for a rook and I should be winning this position. If, for example, uh, well, it's not possible to go rook b1. Um, let's say e4, d4, bishop e4, white doesn't really have anything. Okay, so I didn't see bishop a3. I looked at knight d2, but I couldn't see far enough. But what I did calculate correctly is that knight e5 simply wins a pawn. And it's good enough, I just pick up a pawn. So knight e5. If uh, d5 is played, then this is just huge. Knight takes d2, queen takes d2, dc4, same position as before, without allowing... Uh, without allowing all the tricks with knight f8, knight e6, and so on. So I'd expected him to, to simply take on e4. Unfortunately for him, I can now just throw in knight c4. And after knight c4, the knight cannot retreat because I take on b2, so he has to play bc4. And now I'm a pawn up, and the question is, should I take on e4 with the bishop or, or with the pawn? I couldn't decide what was better. The engine says it's about equal. Uh, I took with the bishop because I didn't want to have a bishop stuck on f5. So takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen c2, and f5 is forced. And in this position my opponent played an excellent move. If, if white does nothing, then I'm simply up a pawn. So f3 immediately, very good. And in this position, of course, I don't want to take on, on f3. Uh, which would secure my extra pawn and double my pawns, but unleash the rook on the e6 pawn. That that wouldn't be good. Also, the queen would be very active. So I had a couple of candidate moves. Uh, my first candidate move was c5. And this move makes a lot of sense. If, if white takes on e4, then I can just take on d4. And after rook a d1, 
Uh, I can continue with f4 or e5. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Uh, I think f4 is stronger. I can just give up this pawn. If rook takes, then there's bishop c5. And if bishop takes, I can just play queen c7, for example, and put pressure on, on, on g3. And I think their position is collapsing. But I was kind of afraid of rook d1, rook a d1. And now c d4, bishop d4, once again, queen c7. And I couldn't assess this well. I wasn't really sure what's going on. If f e4, once again, I can go f4, but okay and we actually reached the same position but I, I couldn't visualize that during the game my second candidate move which i did end up playing was bishop b4 and i figured if we trade off dark squared bishops then it's going to be easier for me to play because this is going to be a weakness and bishop c3 is sort of forced if the rook moves away then i can just take on f3 and there's no rook attacking the e6 pawn so bishop c3 I have to trade, queen takes c3, and now queen g5. Okay, queen g5 puts pressure on, on, black's on white's position, threatening f4, followed by h5 and h4. Uh, also, e5 can be prepared, e3 is, is a possibility. And my opponent, I think, rightly played f4, preventing many of the attacking lines, and I'd expected this. And my idea was, okay, after f4 is played, e4 is secure, I just have an extra pawn. All of that is true. Queen f6, which is fine. Rook a d1 is fine. Rook f d8 is fine. He played queen b3 here. And once again, a key point in the game, and th this is where it gets extremely interesting for me. I didn't think I was winning. I knew I was better because I was up a clean pawn, but b7 is weak, d5 is coming, and I don't really have an easy way to secure all of that. And I had played rook d7 here almost automatically, uh, which is a good move. It, it's not a bad move. The alternative was taking on d4, which I hadn't even considered. So rook takes d4, uh, queen takes b7, of course, uh, and rook ad8 and obviously this isn't possible because the rook hangs so the rook has to move if the rook doesn't move if the rook takes then then i take back with check and i just pick up a bunch of material so for example rook c1 and now e5 and this should be winning for black according to the engine at least <clears throat> because i mean if you don't play fe5 what do you do fe5 queen e5 these pawns are very strong the king is extremely unsafe uh, also instead of uh, taking on e5 i could go queen e6 or queen g6 let's say queen g6 and threatening f4 which again is is a huge advantage so that was possible instead i played rook d7 which is okay and now if my opponent doesn't strike with d5 straight away i will play rook ad8 and I mean, their position will be tied down. E3 doesn't really do much because of C5. And as long as the rook is hanging, uh, I, I have an advantage. So D5 straight away. Now, what would you do here? Uh, I spent maybe 10 minutes calculating in this position. And I'm very upset to say that I didn't even consider the very logical engine continuation uh, which is rook ad8. After rook ad8, which I hadn't considered because the rook's now defended, the queen is on b3, uh, white plays dc6, and I simply go bc6. Okay, and after rook d7, rook d7, I have the d file. I have queen d4 coming uh, if white doesn't prevent it. And if white does prevent that, then I have queen d8 securing my control over the file. So for example, rook d1, this I can just take. Rook d1, queen d1, and queen c3 should be good because I have a ton of infiltration squares and all the pawns are weak. So <clears throat> takes, takes, queen c3, and white simply doesn't have a way to, to defend everything. If for example, uh, let's say queen d6, then queen e1 check, and I pick up the pawn on a2. But on d5, I didn't go rook a d8. <clears throat> I'd calculated 
all the way until this is move 22 i'd calculated until move 28 or something and my calculation was correct but my evaluation was wrong i'd misassess the position assuming that i had to have an advantage so e takes c takes is forced c takes and now rook takes is forced otherwise i play queen f7 followed by d4 so rook takes and in this position i can play queen f7 uh, or oh, no i cannot play queen f7 yet i have to take first because on queen f7 they take and if i take the queen uh it's it's still defended so i would lose uh, so rook takes d5 queen takes d5 check queen f7 now defending the pawn on b7 rook d1 queen d5 rook d5 and i have to prevent rook d7 so i played rook f8 okay if rook d7 i go rook f7 and i'm fine now i have an extra pawn on the queen side and it's a potential passed pawn but their king is so much stronger than mine and most importantly i have no way to prevent it from coming to e5 okay so i came this far king f2 rook f7 and i thought okay i'll go well slowly preparing uh, a pawn push on the queen side unfortunately with the king on e5 i cannot defend my f5 pawn and everything is weak so i don't stand the chance here or I, I don't have any winning chances here despite being a pawn up i still don't have a passed pawn i cannot easily go b5 so this is a complete misevaluation and i'll show you what happened king e3 king f8 king d4 king e7 king e5 and and that's it i have no way to make progress i tried rook f6 he played rook c5 threatening rook c7 so forcing king d7 he played rook d5 check king c7 rook c5 check i don't want to draw my opponent is lower rated than me and i'm having a poor tournament so i, I tried king b8 which is still okay but but it's still equal uh, he played rook d5 wanting to go uh, rook d7 and once again i can repeat which is probably the best idea king c7 rook c5 and and a repetition instead of that i calculated something uh, that was risky but at least it gave me winning chances i'd spent a lot of time here i don't remember how much but maybe 15 minutes and i played rook a6 and i'm going to trade my f pawn for the a pawn and give myself two connected passed pawns the downside is white's gonna have a very mobile passed pawn in the center so king f5 of course rook a2 and now if if king e4 then white is definitely losing rook e2 and all the pawns disappear off the board i just have two extra pawns and i win so e3 rook takes h2 king takes e4 and this is the imbalance i was looking for i i wasn't sure whether i could win this but i knew that it was imbalanced enough that i could win i also knew my opponent could win so you know king c7 uh, i want to push my pawns and activate my king and prevent rook d7 king f3 an excellent move because once the e pawn starts moving down the board i have to get behind it and now i don't have rook e2 so it's king f3 is forcing me to waste the tempo on rook h1 e4 rook e1 now the pawn cannot advance if if king f2 then i take the pawn so e5 and now b6 i want to push my a pawn and in this position white is threatening to queen if i move my rook away from the e file and my opponent just repeated the position king f2 rook e4 is absolutely forced uh if if i move my rook away i don't know where but let's say c1 then e6 and i resign Th there's nothing here uh if rook c6 then then f5 and this pawn is queening so after king f2 rook e4 he played king f3 i played rook e1 king f2 rook e4 and we agreed to a draw there's no way for either of us to to make progress really uh, unless he wants to risk with f5 and i don't think f5 is a good idea i think f5 may just be losing for white i was calculating this and i would have gone uh king c6 
And the only thing, the only sensible thing white could try is f6, where I cannot take the rook because the, the pawn just queens. So g f6, e f6, and once again, if I if I take on d5, then f7, and white's just winning. My rook cannot get behind the pawn. So rook e8. Now the rook is hanging. Rook h5, rook h8. And I think I'm winning this position. G4, king d6, g5, king e6. And I, I'm not sure how how white should call it. The engine says gh6, king f6, and black should be close to winning. <clears throat> so yeah. On uh where were we? On f5, if I go king c6 and my opponent goes rook d6 check, which is a bit more resilient, then I go king c5 and I'm hurling my pawns forward. If, for example, e6 here, that doesn't do anything, I just take the rook. So how, how does white defend the pawn? Uh, maybe rook d7 is possible, but now I just take on e5. And once again, I think I should be able to win this position. For this particular position, the engine says it should be drawn, but I'd always take take black here. So not a good game, uh, all in all. Uh, the first critical position came here where I could have gone knight d2 with a much bigger advantage than what I'd gotten in the game. But I didn't calculate everything correctly because I'd missed bishop a3. Anyway, I hope you learned from this game. Uh, let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.